Edelweiss and CNBC TV 18 present Change India, what India needs. Hello and welcome to Change India. I'm Shireen Bhan and we're talking about the entrepreneurial agenda for the country. Arun Jaitley in his maiden budget focused on what he sees as the government's efforts to nurture the entrepreneurial ecosystem. The big announcement in Budget 2014 was the 10,000 crore rupee fund for startups. How that's finally going to work out is a different question altogether. But the government has said that it's clear that it wants to nurture entrepreneurs, it wants job creators to flourish in this country. Before I go any further, let's listen in to what some of India's leading venture capitalists, angels and entrepreneurs have to say. E-commerce, as you know, has a potential to be a hundred billion dollar industry over a decade. And there is a lot of interest in foreign investors to put money behind Indian entrepreneurs. So I think if we can put money behind uh, e-commerce through foreign direct investment, there is going to be a big fillip to employment. A lot of small merchants can come and sell uh, online. And it will give a great surge to entrepreneurship. Capital gains tax. Uh, really hits the unlisted companies and therefore the entrepreneurs and the investors more. Perhaps that should be uh, looked at. Uh, also the ease with which you can create a company, the ease with which you can shut down a company. Uh, at least if companies get to a certain size, till then have self-certification, uh, not have so many inspectors roaming around them. If we do that, we will get more entrepreneurs into manufacturing. Right now they are mostly in uh, in services and IT. It was heartening to see the budget uh, uh, announce a 10,000 crore fund towards entrepreneurship and incubation. I think it's a step in the right direction. But there have already, I think, been some incubators around and there's a lot of learning from the incubators which have been in play with the IITs and other institutes. And I think now the government has to focus on how we can make some of these incubators successful actually. So we've got to have role models coming out of these incubators. So it's not just the money alone, but how we spend it which will be important. I think the government can also encourage entrepreneurship coming from tier 2 and tier 3 towns more specifically because most of entrepreneurship still tends to be uh, centered around the metros. Well, joining me now is uh, Kapil Sekri, the promoter of Fratelli Wines, and Ambarish Gupta, the founder and CEO of Nolarity. Gentlemen, appreciate you joining us. Kapil, let me start by asking you, because you know, you're a second generation entrepreneur and also a first generation entrepreneur. Is it easier starting up today? Uh, take us through your journey of being able to start Fratelli Wines. I mean, wines is now a growing opportunity in India, but when you started off, it was a very, very nascent business in terms of you know, challenges to set up, dealing with farmland, dealing with farmers, all of that. What was that experience like for you? Well, it was, um, you know, it was very challenging, uh, you know, it, uh, because we have to go through so many regulations, uh, you know, set up by the government because it's, it's not just a consumer business, it's not just a lifestyle business, so you have to deal with all aspects of business. You know, you're first, like you said, you know, collecting agriculture land is not easy. Then setting it up, you know, in, in the given framework of the government is not easy. Then getting the permissions to import plants uh, for those, uh, you know, the land that you want is not easy. Then after that, the technology and the knowledge which was available was not easy. Is it easier today being an entrepreneur? Say as a second generation, you know, we are a little privileged that we have other businesses to fall back upon and I'm going to deny that, you know, and I'm going to shy away from that. So our... Our, so uh, the capital you know, provides you the cushion. Absolutely. And, and also the, the, uh, the comfort to fail. You know, like we always have been brought up by a father saying that the biggest failure in life is failure not to try. So mm. at least try. We are privileged that way. I won't deny that. You know. Is it easier, Ambarish, uh, you know, as the founder and CEO of Nolarity, a new economy business, uh, less government hassles, less regulatory approvals that are required? Is it easier and which is why we're seeing more and more entrepreneurs in this country, first generation entrepreneurs, moving towards technology or tech-based companies? Uh, it's, it's easier to do business today because there's more capital available. Uh, you see all the venture capital and private equity companies currently in India investing in new opportunities which has been created because of this uh, upcoming middle class in India, 300 million mm. uh, middle class that is coming up. So capital is available. Uh, you have a lot of people coming back from US. I came back from US. Um, it's a technology talent available. Um, uh, people graduating from IITs and IAM look mm. for job in India nowadays than they do uh, that they did uh, 10 years back. I went to US. Directly. Well, there's no denying the fact that opportunity and talent is available. The question is that what are the hurdles 
in the whole journey to starting up, uh, let's talk about something that you said that, you know, there's easy money available. And yes, there is easy money available. It's very clear and evident in the kind of valuations that startups are being able to command at this point in time. But then you saw something like the startup tax coming in, uh, which has not been resolved even by this government in its maiden budget, even as it set up this 10,000 crore rupee fund and so on and so forth. So somewhere, is there a mismatch between what the government intends to do as far as nurturing the entrepreneurial ecosystem is concerned, and then the action. No, th th that is true. Um, so I think on one hand, there is a 10,000 crore um, startup fund be being created. On, uh, on the other hand, you still you see... You have Section 56 of the Income Tax Act, which nothing has been done about. And, and the telecom. So we are a cloud telephony company. We see um, uh, it's pretty regulated, uh, and the regulations are getting stronger and stronger, which many times do not really support innovation to the level. So there are, there are two different things going on um, uh, from government side. Uh, but the reason I feel that this do, is, it's easier to do business in India today is more because of capital, the opportunity, and the human resource that is available now. Uh, you know, let me just pick up on the point that, uh, that uh, Kapil just made there and this business about trying and if you fail then pick yourself up and, and, and try again and the legal framework that this government is attempting to put in place uh, to ensure easy exits, to ensure failure uh, uh, as far as startups are concerned. But the stigma attached to failure in this country, uh, how significant is that in terms of acting as a challenge for somebody like you to start up? I think it's coming down, uh, quite, quite aggressively coming down, especially in the technology sector that um, uh, I'm actually a second time entrepreneur. My first venture failed in 2004. Um, and uh, when I spoke with VCs in India um, and then the management team that I hired in India, they looked at it as a, as a positive experience uh. Uh, of having gone through the journey once and there was more but confidence. But what was the reaction from family and friends? It w wasn't too bad. I mean, it, it was two years. Uh, people said, you know, you wasted two years of your life. Uh, but... Um, now do it. Which is what I did. I went back to US and did my MBA and huh. worked for McKinsey and Company in US. What, to your mind, is the single biggest thing that they need to do? One, of course, is just the ease of doing business, which hopefully, holistically, they are approaching at this point in time. But let's just look at, for instance, the e-commerce space, which is where we've seen a lot of startups in India uh, acquire success and acquire success fairly quickly. A lot of them are now being forced to headquarter themselves outside of India because of the regulation yes. and, and understanding the new reality. Sorry. I think the banking sector. Um, so if you look at, for example, uh, if you're trying to build up a company and a large one, which is going to scale, you need capital. Um, and there's two kinds of capital available. You have equity and you have you know, debt. Um, um, the problem uh, with the soft businesses in India is that they cannot get debt from the banks because the banks require collateral. Uh, fixed collateral and they have very old policies around how, how they value you. So literally you're dependent on equity, which is a very expensive form yeah. of capital, reduces your access to, to yeah. equity. I, I, I think uh, if there was, the, the companies were to get these two supports, mm. I think it will make the life much more easy uh, than what it is currently. Kapil, would you agree? Access to finance and, and just, you know, access to the banking system, right. really. And, and let's not just talk about startups. Let's also talk about the small and medium enterprises because that, in a sense, is the Absolutely. backbone of the economy. They are the actual job providers. And, uh, you know, they, they don't have access to, to uh, capital at all at this point in time. Absolutely. But, you know, I have a little different view on this. First of all, in the MSME, government has done something right. You know, sure. that you, you, take, you, know you do get, uh, you know, pricing preferences when you're applying for government tenders. There are certain, um, I think, 300-odd items which are reserved where MSME will get a preference. Even in a private sector, if you're an MSME, you apply, your payments will be processed faster. But I think what is more important is that what you touched upon is that the government needs to make it easier for people to start a business. It's easier for people to enter. And I think that one thing that the government can do, which should not cost them much money, is actually look at every law which has been in place and not been touched on for the last 20 years. Well, because fortunately, we now have a panel that the Prime Minister has set up to do exactly that. Look at obsolete and archaic laws. They're supposed to submit their report by this winter session of Parliament. We don't know what will finally come off it but at least the attempt is being made at this point in time think, so that's yeah, good exactly news. I think that's great news um, second thing I think is that we should also encourage the private sector to also encourage entrepreneurship you know a simple example of this Johnson and Johnson in America in the 1950s that you know the innovators were allowed to become patent holders and profit sharers in any new product which was developed banded is a perfect creation which world saw because of that so why don't we in India why are we always looking at what government can do yeah. there are rich private sectors 
why can't they do something? Why can't we encourage them? You know, like you give depreciation for setting up windmills, give them depreciation to set up venture pool funds in their mm. companies. Let mm. them encourage young Not people. the other way around. Here you've actually imposed a tax on them to, to exactly. help other startups or to exactly. help the entrepreneurial ecosystem. To me, that is because we need to really get private sector involved. Kapil, and let me get you in on this, Ambarish, because at one hand, uh, you know, a lot of young professionals, young entrepreneurs say that let the government stay out of business. The government's business should not be getting into my business. So the government should have a hands-off approach. And at the same time, then you want benefits, incentives, and so on and so forth from the government. So it's a, it's a tenuous relationship between hands-off and how hands-on the government should actually be. But this business of encouraging the private sector to invest in startups, to invest in creating accelerators, incubators, and so on and so forth. Uh, should the emphasis now shift from what the government should do to what the private sector can do? No, I totally agree. I absolutely agree. Um, I, th I, think, I think when you're talking about entrepreneurship and new opportunities, uh, the private sector is far, far more well-versed in evaluating those opportunities yeah. in the management team yeah. and being able to pick up uh, the right set of uh, companies. When I looked at this, you know, the, the corpus that has been created, large corpus. For the 10,000 crore rupee fund, uh, yeah. I think government should not be investing. It's, yeah. it's a venture capital industry. Government is yeah. getting into venture capital and yeah. private equity, yeah. um, uh, while those people who will be doing do not have any experience mm. or any consequence of bad investment either. Uh, that should be done in private industry and government can instead improve the tax laws, uh, make it better. What do you have to say, Kapil? Because, you know, I, and it's a, it's a good point because I had a debate with a whole bunch of uh, entrepreneurs and VCs on exactly this. And one camp believed that it's a good thing that the government is actually putting its money where its mouth is. But the other camp believed that you don't have the expertise, you don't have the specialization. Either you farm it out to somebody with the expertise and specialization to manage and run this fund for you. As I said, we don't have details uh, even today as to how this fund is going to work. But in principle, do you agree with the idea of the go government putting money uh, uh, and acting as a VC? Um, to an extent, yes, but no, not fully. Uh, I think uh, I, I agree with you. I think uh, government should encourage policy framework. Government should encourage you know, bringing in better climate, maybe setting up specialized banks for specialized businesses because not every business is different. You know, an e-commerce business is Yeah, but we have different. the Sidbis and the Nabards of the world and look where we are today. I think in the private sector, I mean, I think there should be private sector specialized banks because, you know, the business that hospitality is very different to e-commerce. So, and I think that's what even the governor RBI was, is thinking, is, is about. thinking yes. about. I think yes. that's where the government should focus on. But just having this, you know, this 10,000 crore corpus fund is a lovely announcement, but like you said that it's an announcement. Now, you know, how it's going to be distributed from where it's going to be distributed. Um, to me, um, I, it, I, I would reserve my judgment on that. Well, on that note, we are going to take a break here on Change India. Come back to us. You're watching the special discussion. Edelweiss and CNBC TV 18 present Change India. What India needs. Welcome back. You're watching Change India and we're discussing the agenda for entrepreneurship. Are you feeling hopeful, uh, the point that Kapil raised that, uh, you know, now with these differentiated bank licenses coming into play, we don't know eventually when they will uh, be given out and when those banks will finally come out, but the government and the Reserve Bank thinking on those lines. Do you believe that that could, in a sense, be the next uh, wave as far as giving a boost and a fillip uh, to the startup culture in this country? I am definitely hopeful. Um, uh, and one of the things that have happened as soon as this new government came in, um, uh, if you look at a flurry of investment made by uh, the, uh, the foreign institutions in India, uh, it's basically additional trust um, on, on this government and doing the right things. I think the banking sector, uh, the evolution uh, the, this government is talking about is much needed mm. um, for the more dynamic sector, uh, which is the more services sector in India. Mm. Um, and I, I think uh, if something comes out of it, I, I have my fingers crossed, if something comes out, it will be really, really helpful uh, for the private industry. You know, I want to also touch upon uh, another issue, and it's an interesting thing that we're seeing that a lot of Indian startup companies, especially in the technology sector, based out of India, but are looking at opportunities in the global marketplace. They're not so focused as far as the domestic market is concerned. You're somebody who's actually focusing on the domestic consumption story as opposed to looking outside of India. Uh, what is the challenge of being able to capitalize on the domestic opportunity versus being able to look outside? See, I think in, in, uh, in our uh, case uh, specifically that we looked at, um, I firmly believe that you know, we, uh, the opportunity is in India. 
And um, I think uh, when we travel abroad, you know, every time we talk to people is that they are, you know, they are, they are literally hungry for our kind of market, you know, that, oh my God, you know, 300 million, you know, possibly 500 million middle class. So and even at five and a half percent, I mean, who exactly. else is growing at that, that, that uh, growth rate? Exactly. Yeah. So I think uh, for us, but in our case, there was also more of a case of a personal spread portfolio that all our other businesses are very export centric, they have exposure on foreign exchanges, they are technology oriented. Mm. So it was also more of a balance internally that we wanted to do with our investments that we must have uh, a domestic you know, play. Like a domestic play, you know, in, in which is uh, get into a business where the consumption is low, but in time to come it can grow. Mm. So that's, that's where our play was. But then, like I said, in that case, then you need to have your sustainability part that you, mm. know, you need to be able to sustain that time that it's going to take you. Mm. Because the domestic consumer is still as intelligent as the one outside yeah. India. You, know, yeah. you can't fool him with any mediocre product now. But you know, as far as the domestic consumer is concerned, do you really think that we are going to see first generation entrepreneurs being able to get into uh, things like manufacturing? Uh, you know, high end manufacturing I can understand, but manufacturing or is it largely going to be e-commerce, is it largely going to be application, uh, mobile application based companies that you actually see emerging out of India? I think it all depends um, on, on how the reforms really play out. Um, if you look, so if you are looking at industrial uh, companies, you are talking about manufacturing companies. Yeah. They are very dependent on the infrastructure that is available um, in, in, in the country. You're, they are very dependent on the regulations, uh, import export regulations, right? Large amount of capital, yeah. um, and they need to be able. To, if they are serving in Indian market, then they 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 should be large enough Indian market for their products. They all. All of those places, there are challenges. Now, in the market uh, size point of view, I think the challenges will go down in, in next five, 10 years as the middle class start building up. But the other challenges still remain. Um, if you look at e-commerce industry, they fly. Uh, the, when, when you buy something on web, uh, they don't use trucks. Uh, they don't use road network. If they want to do the same day delivery, they fly. And, and it's cost them a lot of money, and mm. which, which, which hurts them. So there is infrastructure uh, issue uh, is still there. I, I, I think if that solves in next five to ten years, um, uh, uh, you can be more optimistic about it. But in the meantime, uh, the entrepreneurs still have uh, pretty large industries available in front of them mm. where they can build up companies that serve Indian market and emerging markets. Um, so we are uh, focused on emerging markets, building out of India and, and selling in APAC and Middle East. Um, it's large enough market for us. Um, so we'll not wait. Mm. We'll, we'll move ahead. So which are, the, which are the sectors that you believe we are going to see a fair amount of uh, entrepreneurial activity despite all the constraints and the challenges besides technology? Well, I, I think as little brick and mortar as possible. I think more brick and mortar creates more problems. More challenges, um, yeah. So um, uh, you're talking about any services um, uh, that can be offered out of India. So you're talking about SaaS companies, for example, um, which is actually technology companies. Yeah. Um, your BPOs have done well in India. KPOs um, um, have done well in India. Um, uh, you are talking about th there's a lot of companies being built in India which do uh, infra your IP development, intellectual mm. property development sitting in India. You're talking about drug companies, right? So all the places where the brick and mortar challenges can are small uh, compared to other challenges, I think India can and continue human, to do well. Human capital and human talent is actually right up there in terms of requirement and need. Those are probably going to flourish. Exactly. And As a second generation entrepreneur and now a first generation entrepreneur, if I were to ask you to draw out an agenda uh, so that we do see more people like you putting their capital to work, starting up, becoming job creators, what would it be? I think it's um, I think it's a drive of uh, sense of achievement which goes beyond profits. I think that's what has to come from our generation. That's that's insight that we have to find. That you know there is whenever you set up something now, you have to set up thinking that it's more than profits. I think as far as the government's concerned, they just need to create a better atmosphere for us. They need to create that positivity back. They need to bring that exuberance back. They need to bring that nationalism back, which we saw on the 15th August speech. You know, I, I have Make heard... in India sell everywhere. Absolutely. You know, and I think that, that, that's what we need from the government. Rest the policies aren't, you know, aren't the best, but they aren't bad. You know, there are other countries out there with worth policies. And I think it's, it's really now up to us as entrepreneurs to really you know, face the situation what we have and give the best we can to the country. And I, I think where I, uh, I'm a little bit more you know, optimistic than you are, I think there'll be growth in every industry. I'm, I'm pretty bullish on India generally in all aspects. I think it's really our two decades and you know, we should grab it.
Well, it's our decade is uh, the view here from the two entrepreneurs that we've got sitting with us in the studio. The question now is, will the government make it easier for people to start up businesses and to also exit businesses? And from a mindset point of view, is it going to be easier for people to try, fail, and then try again? But uh, we leave you with these thoughts. And before we go, here's a look at what some of our other fellow Indians have to say on this matter. Thanks very much for watching. We had the announcement of the 10,000 crore startup fund. We had uh, the redefinition of the whole MSME sector, which they proposed. There were things like they're going to create, uh, you know, in rural areas, uh, they're going to give impetus to entrepreneurship. And that was very, very exciting. A lot would really depend on how it is executed because the devil is always in the details. So as long as things are done in the right fashion, I think it talks really more from a long-term perspective and in the right direction. Going forward, what the government can do is look at other, you know, successful business models ar uh, around the world. Silicon Valley wasn't made overnight, but, you know, there are certain other economies like, you know, Chile has a great startup program or Brazil is coming up again you know so in latin america there are certain examples where they're trying to you know encourage entrepreneurship and for that the government is subsidizing them heavily i think the indian government needs to take a cue from them there is no relief for uh, you there is no loan system because today the entrepreneur's biggest problem is to seek a loan from the uh, from the banks and unless that is there the entrepreneurs are promoted no country is going to go big in economy Edelweiss and CNBC TV 18 present Change India, what India needs.